All right, so the past few weeks I've been doing some research on VCO synthesizers versus DCO synthesizers and just trying to understand what it is about VCO synths that give them the character that they have and how that's different from uh, modern DCO or uh, digitally controlled analog synthesizers. Uh, so what I've done here is I've set up a test here with uh, three different VCO synthesizers and one DCO synthesizer. So for the VCO synths, I've got the Behringer Model D, which is a Mini Moog replica. I've got the IK Uno synth, which is a VCO synth, and I've got the Roland Studio Electronics SE02. Um, and I'm going to compare these three VCO synths to the DCO synth, which is the Prophet Rev2, uh, which is a modern uh, analog poly synth uh, with a fully featured modulation matrix. Um, so I'm, I'm just trying to understand here um, why it is that people sometimes give DCOs a bad rap and uh, say they sound more harsh or more cold. And I think I may have uh, stumbled across something here that uh, may have some significance to that. All right, so for this test, what I'm going to do is test just a single sawtooth oscillator on all of these synthesizers uh, with the filter wide open, basically just trying to isolate the oscillator as well as possible all by itself and analyze the character of a single sawtooth oscillator in the spectral graph. Um, a sawtooth oscillator has a rich series of harmonics, um, the most rich series of harmonics, actually. So that's why I chose that one. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to uh, turn on the Behringer Model D, okay, and I'm going to hit a low B note here. All right. So what you'll see here in the spectral graph is you've got the fundamental and the first several harmonics are all very stable here. Uh, but once you get up into these upper harmonics range here in the uh, 5K, 10K range and beyond, you'll see there's a lot of motion here. Uh, there's this sort of undulation of these hill-shaped patterns where there's uh, some frequency modulation going on and um, some washing out of these upper frequencies. Um, so this is a subtle effect. If you'll note, the fundamental is up here around negative 30 decibels. Uh, you know, these upper harmonics are down in the negative 66, negative 72 range. Uh, so it's a subtle effect, uh, but I think it is uh, noticeable in the background that uh, these upper harmonics are a bit washed out and there's a bit of motion in them. All right, so now we'll move on to the IK Uno, which is also a VCO synth. And uh, same test, just a single sawtooth oscillator uh, with the filter as wide open as possible. So again, you'll notice the fundamental and first harmonics are all very stable. But again, once you get up into these upper harmonics here, you've got a lot of motion. The same sort of undulating uh, movement back and forth of this hill shape here. All right, so now we'll move on again to the Roland SE02. Uh, this is a synth uh, developed in conjunction with Studio Electronics. Um, another VCO synth. So same B note again. Uh, again, the same behavior here. You've got the fundamental and first harmonics all very stable, but once you get up into the upper harmonics, you have this motion, this sort of harmonic jitter um, that's washing out some of the higher frequencies and making them less clear. All right, so now we're going to move on to the Prophet Rev 2. Let me just turn off this uh, modulation real quick. Okay, so this is the Prophet Rev 2 um, in its standard state with a, uh, the DCO oscillator. So this is, again, a single sawtooth oscillator. And you'll notice the difference right away here. You've got the fundamental and first harmonics all very stable. But then as you get up into these upper harmonics, there is absolutely no motion. It's a very pristine uh, frequency up here. Um, all of the harmonics uh, are not moving at all, basically. So they're very crystal clear. And I think this may be one of the reasons why people call DCO synthesizers sounding more cold or more harsh, because in the upper harmonics, you don't have that same sort of jitter or that undulation of the higher harmonics that, that washes out a little bit of that sound. All right, so now I'm going to turn on this uh, modulation that I set up in the Rev2. So I'm just using the Sound Tower editor to control my uh, Rev2 keyboard here. Um, and I just switched these two from 0 to 1. And I'll, I'll go in in a minute and explain what I'm doing with this uh, modulation matrix in order to get this behavior. OK, so this now is the Rev2. Again, the exact same test with a B uh, with the modulations added. So now you see we've got the fundamental and first harmonics all very stable, but now you've got the same sort of pattern uh, that you do on the VCOs. Uh, all of the upper harmonics here have this undulation now, this movement back and forth, where it's washing out some of this upper harmonic content and making it less clear like the VCO synths. 
All right, so um, I'm just going to go ahead and I'll keep the sound on the Profit Rev 2, uh, but I just want to click through to these other synthesizers just so you could compare the spectral graph. Uh, my MIDI is routed so that they're all on all at the same time. Um, so here's this is the Profit Rev 2 with the modulation that I added. Here is the Studio Electronics SEO2. Again, you'll see a very similar behavior, very similar undulation motion going back and forth with a little bit of randomness. Uh, here we have the IK Uno synthesizer. Again, the same sort of motion, um, even down to these sort of shapes that are, uh, that are generated through the FFT bins. Um, you'll see there's the same sort of motion in here. And the Behringer Model D, again, almost identical motion. You have the uh, these sort of hill shapes moving back and forth with some randomness, the same sort of shapes being generated in the FFT analysis here. So again, here's Model D, the IK Uno, the Roland SEO2, and the Profit Rev 2 with the modulation that I set up. All right, so now I'll uh, just go into how I set up this modulation for the Profit Rev 2. Uh, so this is a way to uh, replicate this sort of upper harmonic jitter. Um, so the challenge that I ran into um, with the Rev 2, and this may be different with other synthesizers, uh, but the Rev 2 doesn't allow you to set a destination of oscillator fine tuning. Um, you can target the oscillator frequency uh, with the destination or with the LFOs, but you can't target uh, fine tuning directly. So um, I had to do a little jury rigging here in order to get this to work. Uh, but what I've done is I've set up the gated sequencer here and I'm just using uh, one lane of the gated sequencer here uh, with just a single value and one reset after it. So I'm basically just sending this, this number two value from the gated sequencer. I'm making it available. I'm not actually uh, setting the destination here, but just making this number two available. And um, here I'm routing in the modulation matrix, I'm routing sequence number one to the LFO one amount and the LFO two amount. So here's LFO one and here is LFO two. And I'm just routing them with a value of one here. And actually the value that's passed on is not even one. It's, uh, it's the value that I have in the gated sequencer of two divided by the 125 steps, I believe it is in the gated sequencer. So you're really, yeah, it's a fraction. It's two divided by 125 that's being sent on now as the amount for this uh, this LFO. Um, so I have two different LFOs set here. One of them is a triangle here. One of them is a random. Um, and I found that this uh, combination of two LFOs just gives that sort of uh, motion that you see where it's mostly, there's, a, there's some standard... Uh, undulation moving back and forth like this, but there's a little bit of randomness to it. So that's why I have both a triangle and a random set up with the uh, same frequency. Uh, for the frequency range here, I played around with this a bit um, and did some testing. Um, I settled on 67 for this test. It seemed to best match all these VCO synths. Um, I actually wonder if there is a correlation between this frequency, between the, um, the LFO rate and uh, some of these uh, VCO synthesizers, the actual chips on the board. Um, so I was doing some research into the Curtis chips and uh, some of the old SEM chips, trying to understand uh, how they operated, uh, what kind of voltages they operated on. And my, my suspicion is that there's some, uh, there's some reason for this high frequency jitter that you see in the VCO synths uh, that may be related to the operating voltage on the actual VCO chips. Um, they mostly operate like at the uh, 5 volt, 6 volt, or 12 volt range, uh, depending on where you're measuring uh, the voltage on those uh, VCO chips. So anyway, um, this is just an overview of the uh, analysis I did with the uh, VCO synthesizers. Um, I'd love to hear from you guys too, if you can do a similar analysis on other uh, VCO circuits. I'm guessing that uh, you'll have the same sort of behavior since I've uh, checked this out on three different VCOs and they're all basically the same. Uh, but I'd love to hear uh, some more information from, from everyone else if you can do some testing. Um, and then, uh, yeah, just if you have any other questions or comments, just let me know. All right, have a good one.